Hello, my name is Anna Tomaszewska and I'm a PhD student at Imperial College London working on battery fast charging. Today I'll give a short summary of a review paper we published on this topic in collaboration with our partners at Shell and colleagues from the Shinwa University. I'll talk briefly about the physical phenomena that limit the charging rate, then I'll discuss some of the approaches that we can take to improve rate capability, and finally I'll highlight the key areas where we found more research was still needed. As this figure illustrates, the topic of fast charging is really complex and we need to consider factors at multiple length scales. Even though fundamentally the rate of charging is limited by diffusion rates and electrode potential considerations, these are in turn affected by how we design our electrodes, cells and packs, what current profiles we use, how we thermally manage the system, and finally on the environmental conditions as well. So naturally, the possible improvements span all these length scales too. Let's start by discussing why charging beyond a certain rate is so difficult. Battery charging requires lithium to travel from the metal oxide cathode to the typically graphite anode, crossing through both the liquid electrolyte and the solid electrodes. While the reactions of the electrodes are generally fast, the rates of diffusion through the electrolyte and the electrode particles are much slower. When we try to charge at a very fast rate, this leads to the buildup of concentration gradients, which can cause unwanted side effects such as particle cracking. Additionally, as the surface of, of the graphite anode becomes saturated, the lithium ions that arrive there may deposit this metallic lithium instead of intercalating. This phenomenon is called lithium plating, and it is a big problem because it leads to rapid capacity fade and can cause internal short circuits and thermal runaway in extreme cases. Graphite is particularly susceptible to lithium plating because its open circuit potential is very close to that of lithium, so it is relatively easy to make plating thermodynamically possible if we charge the battery too fast or if we charge at low temperatures, which make the diffusion processes even slower. In the last few years, there have been endless suggestions on how to improve the fast charging capability. From the materials perspective, one obvious solution would be to replace the graphite with another electrode material with an open circuit potential further away from lithium. However, this reduces the voltage difference between the cathode and the anode, and the energy density often suffers. Alternative materials are also often more expensive or difficult to manufacture at scale compared to graphite. Another possibility is to modify the electrode. Thin electrodes offer a shorter diffusion distance for the lithium ions, but unfortunately this again comes at the cost of reduced energy density. Thicker electrodes can be designed with special structures to provide less winded diffusion pathways and in effect reduce the concentration gradients. This is a promising solution, but it does have its own challenges, such as more complex manufacturing or often increased rates of other side reactions. On the cell scale, it is important to use all the active materials as uniformly as possible to avoid creating hotspots where the local current is much higher than elsewhere or where the temperature is different, which tends to promote lithium plating. Uniformity can be enhanced by the material level mass transport improvements, but also by optimizing tab number and placement. The uniformity issue is also a concern at the module and pack level, where cell to cell balancing and thermal management are both crucial factors. While traditionally thermal management systems have been designed to reject the maximum amount of heat, recent studies have focused more on ensuring temperature uniformity or even preheating cells before fast charging to improve their diffusion rates. Having said that, pack level fast charging research is still relatively scarce. Another interesting approach is to optimize a charging algorithm. At the moment, nearly all EV batteries are charged using a very simple charging profile inherited from lead acid batteries. It is called constant current constant voltage or CCCV. And the name is really self-explanatory. 
the battery is charged at a constant rate until the maximum voltage, at which point the charging mode switches to constant voltage with a gradually reducing current. This strategy is not well suited to fast charging because we're not really using the maximum safe current at the low state of charge, while the constant voltage phase substantially increases the charging time. So over the years, many alternative strategies have been proposed, and only a few types are shown here. For instance, a multi-stage constant current strategy, as well as boost charging, aim to maximize the current in the beginning of charging, when the graphite anode is not yet saturated and plating is less likely. Pulse charging, on the other hand, can help disperse the concentration gradients by including rest or even discharge periods, but that does mean that the, that the current of the charging pulse has to be even higher to achieve fast charging. Finally, some variable current profiles, such as the one shown here, take the cell resistance into account. So the charging process is started with low currents to avoid excessive heating, reaches the maximum at a low state of charge, and then gradually reduces to account for the mass transport limitations and increase the risk of plating. These and other strategies have been demonstrated in many experimental studies and often achieved very promising results, but it is difficult to extrapolate these findings from the cell used in a particular study to other cells and also other environmental conditions. Often we find the charging profiles that work for a certain cell type won't work for another or won't even benefit the same cell if we just change the temperature. It is impractical to test every charging profile in every configuration experimentally, so this area presents many opportunities for modeling. Of course, model-based charging optimization is also tricky, since the physics-based battery models that simulate, that simulate fast charging well are very complex and computationally intensive. Simpler models, such as those based on equivalent circuit networks, do not account for the internal states of the battery and lose accuracy under more extreme use conditions, such as fast charging. So for an application such as onboard charging optimization, we would need to develop reduced order models, which solve quickly but still capture all the important physics. Combining modeling with machine learning is another emerging area of interest. Alternatively, charging profiles could be optimized offline with a detailed physics-based model and periodically updated as batteries age. The research in the fast charging space has been growing really quickly and a vast array of technological solutions have been proposed. Most likely many of these will eventually be combined to make the recharging experience more comparable to refueling a petrol car. Many questions still remain unanswered though. We still do not have methods that could reliably detect lithium plating or particle cracking on board electric vehicles. And it is crucial for degradation and safety reasons that we are able to identify any damage caused by fast charging. The EV industry still relies on the suboptimal CCCV charging profile, which is unsurprising considering the studies on the alternatives have been quite limited in, in the scope. As we highlighted, it is not reasonable to extend the findings of a study conducted on one cell type, let's say room temperature, to other use conditions. Model-based charging optimization is a very promising approach, but we do need accurate reduced order models for online optimization or a methodology for updating charging parameters as cell ages if the optimization is done offline. It's also important to highlight that while fast charging at material and cell level has been researched intensively, there has been much less work on module and pack levels, and we still do not fully understand the links between cell and pack level fast charging performance. Hopefully we can address many of these questions through multiscale modeling, which can help connect the dots between the advancements spanning all these length scales. Thank you very much for watching and this talk was only a brief overview of the findings of our fast charging review so do have a look there if you're interested in more detail.